Hey Titans, this is Mordecai from GamerTitan.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing how I set up my core editor to have a better workflow for me. So let's go ahead and hop into core here. Now, first off, if you guys don't have a core account yet and you would like to make your own games for free, there is my affiliate link in the description down below that allows you to sign up to core completely free. I will get a small commission, but like I said, if you want to make your own games, core is a great platform to do so. And I would very much appreciate if you used my link because it's at no cost to you. So opening up core here, when you first open core, it defaults your windows to various areas. Now, I personally like to modify this a bit. I found that it has improved my workflow. And if some of you are used to working in other engines in the past, you may want to try and set it up similar to you know the t the type of window layout that you're used to. So not only do I move windows around, but there is actually some windows available to us as creators in Core that Core does not have enabled by default. So to give a very quick demonstration on how we are able to adjust the layout of the Core editor. For example, if we wanted for whatever reason to have the hierarchy on the left side, we could drag we could click on this tab here where it says hierarchy and we could as long as you hold your mouse down, you can see that depending on where I move it, it's going to move the hierarchy there. So there's a lot of different options on where we can actually put this. So say we wanted it on the left side, I would just release my mouse and now the hierarchy is on the left. Now, if for whatever reason you accidentally move a window or you mess it up where you're not completely happy with the editor layout and you wanna ever revert back to the default, what you could do is click on window up in the menu here and click on reset view to default. And it'll ask you, are you sure that you want to set it back to default? If you click yes, it sets it back to just how core editor is out of the box. Now to kind of show you how I have my editor set up is the first thing I do is I take core content down here in the bottom left and I drag it to the left side. And then I take project content and I put it on the left side, but below core content. And another thing to mention is if you ever want to readjust the size of a particular, particular window or a tab, you could just simply hover over until it turns blue, hold your mouse and you can drag it and resize just like that. So in terms of the windows available to us as creators out of the box, this is kind of how I have found my workflow to be improved by, by moving these windows like this here. Now, there are other windows, as I mentioned, that I always like to have enabled on my editor. So to add them, what you do is you click on window again, and you can see that anything with a check mark next to it in this list is currently enabled in the editor. And anything that's missing a checkbox is something that isn't actually enabled in the editor currently. So the first one we are going to set up is the event log. So to add this to the editor, we simply click on event log and it pops up this window here, um, not bridged to anything. So where I like to put my event log is the bottom here. And so I'll drag it to the bottom and then I'll drag it to the right. So I keep my event log right here. Now, regardless if you plan on doing any sort of coding or not, I do suggest having your event log somewhere available to you, especially if your game is having an issue. So what the event log allows you to do is if there's any sort of error in your code, um, or like I said, regardless if you're coding it or not, if you're using some stuff from CC and you know there's the potential that two types of CC enabled in your project at the same time causes some sort of issue, or maybe you put a typo if you are a coder or whatever. Anytime there's an issue with your game, an error log will print out showing you not only the script that broke, but the line number and what the problem of the script was. And so, like I said, even if you're not a coder, if you do have a problem with your game, this will at least provide you the information that you need to go seek out help and actually provide them the information that the person that may be helping you needs to actually know how to help you with the problem. And so as opposed to just asking for help saying, you know, my game broke, I'm not sure why, 
this will at least give you a starting point as to what happened with your game and to provide the information needed to fix it. So event log is definitely something I suggest having. Another one I like to use, now once again, this is, this is probably more geared towards people that plan on uh, coding, but uh, it could be helpful for really anyone, is I use the script helper. Now the script helper, when I first started Core, I didn't know how to code, and I was using the API and trying to figure things out that way, and it wasn't until I found the script helper that it really accelerated my speed of learning how to code. And I'll kind of give a brief demonstration of how to use it, but simply I drag this to the bottom left so I always have it available to me. And so essentially what this is, is it's the core API available to you in the editor. And this is extremely powerful because for example, say that I'm working on a game and right inside the editor, there's something that I want to do to the player that I'm not sure how to do. I simply just type in player and to drag this up, I could make this larger to see. By typing in player, anything that's in the core API that allows you to modify the player or anything to do with the player is listed out here. And it has like these headers here. So like it says ability target, camera. So obviously this is an option for the camera. So in this case, you could follow the player. Now you may not know, you may have an understanding of what it is you're wanting to do and you may know roughly what method or functionality you're looking for. But if you need more information at any time, say that there's this binding release or binding press event. Say that, okay, this is what I need, but I'm not sure how to actually code it. Well, what you could do is you could right click, you could click copy to clipboard. And what this will actually do is it will add a demo script to your clipboard. So now if we go ahead and create a new script real quick, I just rewrote re new script when it was already named that. Oops. So I'll open up new script. I will simply paste because it was already added to my clipboard. And we can see that it gives a little bit of information in terms of a comment here that this particular listener passes the player and it passes the string uh, to whatever function that this listener is connected to. Now, this, this is helpful for people that know how to code, but say that you still want to use this functionality, but you, you still don't know what this means. So you could close this. And if we go back to binding press event, if we right click it again, there's the other option that we can actually go to the online documentation. So if we click this, it opens up your browser, it opens up the core API, and it goes to the exact portion of the API that we're trying to look for. So in this case, the binding pressed event. And so we can see that this is relatively the same information that the example code that was added to our clipboard provided us. But in this case, say that we wanted an actual demonstration on how to use the code. What we could do is we could click on this blue eye, ch this blue eye icon, and it'll actually load up the API and give us a example snippet or a, a template code on, on how to do something. So in this particular case, this is how to use a binding pressed event to set up how to sprint. So if you wanted to have a sprint option in your game, you could just copy this, slap it into your game, and have a functional sprint working. I'll go ahead and close this because I don't want it to get too far into the explanation of each of these videos or each of these windows. It's more so kind of how to set up. Now, just really quickly, in future videos, I will be doing more in depth tutorials on various aspects of core. So if at any time you have a question or you you feel like there's something that I should answer that would be a good video, please go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. That'll help me come up with new video ideas. So another one to add that is very useful to not only people that are gonna be coding, but really anyone that's just using core. If we click on window here and we click on history, we can add history to our project and I generally keep this where the hierarchy is as a tab. And so as you're working on your project, so real quick, we can see that this is uh, this history is relatively empty. So if we go to hierarchy, say that we copy this default floor and we paste it a bunch of times. If we go to history now, we can actually see what we did. So we pasted that default floor, what, six times? And so this is very helpful to 
you know, if, if you ever mess something up or you want to revert back to a certain place um, or a certain change that you made, this allows you to do so. So as an example, we have a bunch of default floors. As opposed to simply deleting all these floors, I could go to the history here, I could double click on this, and it reverts back to the state of the, the project of where we only had one default floor. So history is very valuable to have as a backup, um, you know, to, like I said, to revert back to something. Um, and a few other windows. I, so in terms of how I have my editor set up, which is really the, the goal of this video, is this is relatively how I have it set up at all times. There are a few other times where I'll add other windows. So like if I am working on like a leaderboard, it would be good obviously to add the global leaderboards. Um, the object generator might be something that's useful, especially if you are the artist of your team. So if we go ahead and open this up, the object generator, um, just very briefly, allows you to say that you had one object that you wanted to randomly generate throughout your game uh, to, to speed things up a bit. You would use this object generator to go ahead and do that. I don't really use this too often, but like I said, if you are the artist or you plan on focusing on art, this is probably something that you would want in your editor somewhere. Um, other than that, there's also the script debugger. I This is another window I actually do have in my editor. I kind of forgot about that. So where I usually put this is next to the event log. Or if you want to have both the event log and the debugger open at both times, you could go ahead and put that right here. And so just a very brief description of the script debugger. As you're running your game uh, in preview mode, you could actually have it set up to pause on an error. So if that's uh, selected and it's orange, that's what that'll do. You'll want to leave, if you do have the script debugger on and you want it to be running, you'll want to leave that little bug as orange. And this will give you a lot more information on your actual game as a whole and how your code is running together. Uh, that's pretty much it on how I like to have my editor set up. Now, like I said, I generally focus on coding. And so this may, as you can see, it's kind of more focused towards knowing what's happening in the game in terms of code. So if you feel like you want something different, go ahead and play around with the windows. And, you know, like I said, look at these other windows as options to you. There may be some that you want. There may be some that aren't necessarily as valuable to you. And what's really cool is Core allows you to completely customize your editor and give you the information that you need for your particular needs. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Like I, like I said before, if you have any questions or comments, please do so in the comments down below. If you want more correlated content, please hit that subscribe button. And as I said, I'm going to be making more tutorial videos. So being a subscriber will really help know when I'm making new videos. But as I said, if you need any more core information, go ahead and check out these other awesome videos that I filmed on core. I'll catch you next time, Titans.